This portion of Lee Pitts Live is brought to you by Hodges University, educating the leaders of our community for over 20 years. Welcome back, Southwest Florida. I'm so delighted. Finally, I get somebody here in the studio who knows all the detail about me back in the day. I actually went to school with this gentleman. I'm so proud of him. He's written a book. His name is Ralph Harper. His book is Stepped Up, The Urgency of Fatherhood. You'll see it come up on the screen from time to time by Ralph Harper. He's from Birmingham, Alabama. He attended Talladega College. I met him when I was a, a sophomore in college. He was a freshman walking around in the dormitory. And little did I know that he would grow up and be a successful businessman and pen what I consider is going to be a best-selling book. I couldn't put it down. I read it last week and uh, an outstanding book about fatherhood. So, Ralph, good to welcome you to the show, man. Let's, uh, let's bump you in here. And welcome to Leave His Live, man. Thank you so much for inviting me. Ralph, uh, before we get into the book, The Urgency of Fatherhood, you're a successful businessman in your own right that we can be proud of as well as an entrepreneur and as a corporate guy. Kind of summarize uh, to our viewing audience who Ralph Harper is in terms of some things you've accomplished in life? Well, I, uh, I, I first made a conscious decision to leave Birmingham, Alabama to go to Talladega College. Uh, there was one of my instructors at uh, Jackson Nolan who steered me that way. His name is uh, Samson Julius Bennett. Okay. And uh, I went to Talladega College. I uh, had the fortune to do a, uh, uh, an internship uh, through the process at Talladega College, I ended up moving to New York and working with uh, Equitable Life for a short while before I moved to, uh, to PepsiCo. Okay. And uh, I left PepsiCo uh, 11 years ago and uh, started uh, my uh, staffing company, uh, Deploy It Staffing. Okay. And, and, and people who are watching this as well, they can reach you at the website and the, and the phone number that we have on the screen for anything related to staffing. Big corporations, if they need staffing, uh, you do temporary staffing, full-time, just go ahead and yeah, plug we that do, as well. Yeah, we man. do full-time staffing. We do mostly temporary staffing. That includes uh, service lines such as um, IT, professional services, including finance and accounting. Uh, we do some call center stuff, administrative, um, and we make a conscious decision to stay away from the light industrial uh, type work. Okay. But we also offer payroll services and um, um and direct placements as well. Okay. Uh, you, your life experiences have been vast, and, and, and some of them come out here in this book. Since I last saw you running around at Talladega College, <laughs> Kappa Alpha Psi, we got to plug them That's too. right. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, we, of course, we were in different fraternities, but we all got along very well. Yeah, we did. Let me go ahead and play a f plug Five Beta Sigma while I'm sitting here on your <laughs> show, Ralph. <laughs> hey, Ralph, man, how did you, with all of that going on in your life, decide what moved you to say, I need to write a book about fatherhood, stepping up, and the urgency as it relates there. Yeah. I tell you, I, I think the, the, the big thing that happened for me was, was having the experience and, and, and comporting myself as, my, uh, as, as a father to my, to my stepson. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, as my son got older, grew older, um, we would sit around with going back and forth with silly bantering about stuff he did as a child. And... Uh, we talked a lot about my responses to what he did as a child. And some of the stuff was just really funny to, to both of us. And uh, I decided, you know, I, I want to write a book. And he, he, was, he signed up. He was like all for it. He was like, I want to help. But after, you know, after months of, uh, of, of Cody uh, not being available and working, I decided to just start writing. That's excellent. Now, that book, bring it up on the screen again, Rick. That is your son, Cody, uh, on the screen there standing next to you. And um, Rick, when you bring that book up, the, um, you guys almost look like, you know, he's looked like a little young corporate executive in his <laughs> nice little suit and you there. I mean, I mean, is, is that what, what, talk about the design and the cover. What were you, what, what kind of message you were trying to send there as well? Oh my God. We went back and forth on, on, on this design, uh, for the cover a, a lot. And, um, at one point I was, I was sitting and he had his, his elbow on my shoulder. Um, a lot of people like that. And. Uh, we ended up uh, having to do an emergency shoot okay. to to make this work. So uh, so we ended up ended up with this nice but, cover. Uh, the stepped up. Talk about that. The title, the urgency of fatherhood. It it's really, you know, I, I say in my book a lot. I really don't want people to to get too consumed with the stories. I want people to understand, um, you know, uh, the bigger picture story about the notion of 
the importance of biological fathers staying in, the, in, in their kids' lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what this book is about, but I, I chose to be very transparent about what we experienced. Mm -hmm. And you talk about in the book, the, uh, some, some of the things that stood out in the book to me, it was just a great book as I was working my way through it, uh, was your relationship with your father as a kid and, 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 and on the basketball, how he helped you with your jump shot. Yeah. And then you start <laughs> thinking you were just as good as the, the New York Knicks guy. What is his name? Uh, Alan. Uh, Alan Houston. Yeah, I thought Alan that was Houston. a funny yeah. section, man. <laughs> Because, you know, when we were in college, I didn't fancy you as a uh, basketball player. I don't, I don't recall seeing you play basketball, but uh, that was really good. Uh, talk about your experience with your dad. Basically, he was in the household for a, 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 it, what really wasn't there, really. It came, came by. Yeah. And your mom raised uh, 11 kids by herself. Ten. Ten? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, T tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I want to be clear you. about I want to be clear about my father and um, uh, and put things in the right context because I do talk about my father and uh, I found myself actually uh, denigrating my father uh, in, in the early stages of the first mm -hmm. chapter, but then I also found myself uh, commending him for staying. So um, you know this was this is a very important thing for me and um, uh, because I, I I was I found I was writing in my office one night when I started to write that first chapter, denigrating my father for not being close enough, and I had this powerful epiphany, mm -hmm. and I realized that the the reason Cody was, was in my life is because his father somewhat abandoned him, and my father didn't do that, and um, um, even though my father wasn't uh, exceptional. He was around, mm -hmm. and uh, and that better than nothing. Yeah, that meant more to me <laughs> than than you know. I, I the simple really, thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but but that's 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 what it was, and you know you have to realize you know where we came from, Birmingham, Alabama. My father growing up in the in the forties, fifties, and sixties, ten children, a wife. That must have been uh, um, a pretty strenuous uh, mm -hmm. circumstance for for him. What does um, the uh, the idea, uh, particularly in your book, when you focus on education and, and you're trying to get that across to Cody, even when he was getting ready to go off to college, he wants to spend his money on some skiing equipment. Yeah. I know you're probably shocked that I know about all that. But, yeah. And you, you tested him. You're like, hey, here's the $1,200 I think it was, and what are you going to spend it on? I mean, he had $1,200 that people had given him in gifts, yeah. and then he's going to spend it on skiing equipment. And then at that point, you realize, hey, this guy's growing up. Uh, how was it for you to kind of let him have a little bit of a – space there. Yeah, at some point you you have to uh, to let kids uh, uh, manage their choices and I, I talk a lot about choices in the book as well but um, at some point you you have to let go and uh, you can't uh, micromanage you know a teenage a teenager the way you would you know a three-year-old or four-year-old or seven-year-old kid you just can't do that so um, I gave him his leeway he made that that choice and you know um, you know, we just had to go go deal with that. Now, Cody ended up being successful. He finished college. You were there, right there at the graduation with a big smile with him. But along the way, you learned some life lessons. You passed those on, and there were some growing pains, even to the point where you had to punish him. Yeah. Uh, but let's go to your how you were so enamored with um, Theodore Roosevelt and the, uh, the whole um, – um, uh, the, the, it's not the critics that count. What's the, what's the name of that? Uh, I've, I've quoted that a numerous time, but – to be daring, yeah. daring. Uh, you uh, you tied a lot of the book to Roosevelt's quote. You did a great job with that. And as a result of that, you came out with these three types of fathers, triumphant, uh, timid, and daring. Yes. Talk about the triumphant, the timid, and the daring father and how they differ. I tell you, the, the triumphant father is that father who is in the family, being there because he's excited about being there and playing his role as, as a father the way he should and uh, guiding his son or his daughter and uh, doing all the right things, the things that fundamentally fathers should do. And I think that the daring father is in that kind of that, kind of that middle ground mm -hmm. where they, they do enough to get by, they, uh, they succeed and, and, and um, um, sometimes they fail, um, but they're in the arena, they're doing their part, they're doing their part as a father. I, I think my father, uh, should be classified as that daring father because again, my father was there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I really think too that there are timid fathers and I call them cowards because any father who makes a conscious decision to abandon his child 
Um, I, I, I have a fundamental problem with that. And after going through the experience with Cody, um, uh, I, I, I feel more comfortable with the notion that I think these, these fathers are, um, are cowards. When you first started dating Cody's mom, you eventually married her. But when you first started dating her and you met Cody at around five years old, if I, as I recall, uh, and then you grew, grew into that relationship of you know, being an actual father for him, did you find yourself being those three categories as you worked your way up to being triumphant, or did you, were you more triumphant from day one? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I'm, I would stay away from me judging mm -hmm. uh, how I did. It's just hard for me to, to say that I'm, I'm triumphant because I don't think that's fair. Uh -huh. I think it's fair for me to say that, that uh, just like my father, you know, um, I, was, I was daring because, mm -hmm. because I, I was there. I was there. So I stay away from judging. Uh, myself, uh, I'm, I'm good at judging judging others when it comes to this, but uh, when it comes to me judging myself, I'm not so good. Okay. But I do want to want to make um, um, uh, just a, a a point about you know me stepping in, and uh, I think that Cody wrote in his um, in his forward. He says uh, it's 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 about either stepping up or stepping out. And um, that, for me, was, was probably one of the most uh, uh, compelling lines in the, in the entire book. Now, you hear people say all the time, I don't want a ready-made family and all these types of things when they're getting ready to get married. You actually, when you marry Cody's mom, you guys are married for a period of time. Then, when you got your divorce, that wasn't your kid. You didn't have any financial responsibility. It wasn't your biological kid. You could have just wiped your hand and kept on chucking. Right. But you did something I thought was extremely unique. You actually maintained a relationship with the child that wasn't your biological child, and you raised the child, yeah. and for all practical purposes, as his father. Why, why would you decide to do that? What, what, what was that all about? There is something profoundly compelling about comporting yourself as the father to a child. And you get to that place where you realize, wow, you know, this, this kid needs me. Mm -hmm. And um, so even though, um, you know, my, my ex-wife, Sarah, and I, I divorced, uh, I did everything I could to stay in Cody's life. And, and it turned out that uh, I felt strongly Cody needed me, but I also felt that I got to a place, and as a grown man, I, I am not embarrassed to say I needed Cody as well. Okay. And now, um, the, uh, as I'm reading the book and I have a son myself, I'm saying, hey, I'm reading this book, and I'm taking all these tips from my good friend, Ralph, from college. Because you, you made a lot of good points in there about how to raise your child and some of the, the pitfalls and things that you overcame. You weren't perfect either. And, uh, and you became triumphant. I would say that you were triumphant. And I think that is a great book for every father to read, whether you think you're doing good with your child or not. You can learn so much from the book. What has been the response from the public, from people who've read your book, and, uh, and what are some things that have happened since then in terms well, of? This, this has been a, an amazing journey. I have had people stop me in Walmart and say, hey, listen, uh, did you write a book? Mm -hmm. I have had people stop me who have read my book, and they always, they always have uh, stories to tell about their particular father, uh, fatherhood relationship. Um, and uh, they, they tell me about uh, the stepfathers in their lives. And this has been amazing, more than I anticipated, and, um, um, and, and it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because the message needs to get out, and and you know I, I started writing my book over a year ago, and um, um, just to you you can tell how important it, important it is when you have people like Oprah taking this on and, and talking about the notion of fatherless kids. Um, this is a big deal, and uh, and it, it really does need to be addressed. And I talk about the uniqueness, Rick. If you could bring that book up again as we continue. Uh, let's talk about the uniqueness here. One, people may notice that when they look at Cody physically, they can tell that he's white and you're black. Talk, uh, you and Cody even talked about in the forward how yeah. when he first introduced you to people as his father, they would kind of get a little confused there. <laughs> uh, just just kind of share a little story with us on, on the whole race piece and how uh -huh. how you guys were able to uh, oh, work man. smoothly I, through race. There there are <laughs> tons of story. Cody and I rarely even think about race. Right. And I think the only reason uh, Cody talked about it is uh, when I, uh, I wrote the book and I mentioned uh, race in, in either my, my, my forward or, or the first chapter. 
and Cody read the book before he uh, wrote his foreword. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have gone to parties. Cody's friends absolutely love me. Right. I, I believe that in all, in all, with all my heart. You know, I, I go to some of his parties and uh, his friends are there. And I went to one uh, um, pool party and they were all outside and we were just... They cheered when I walked through the door. <laughs> they cheered, and it was just a—it was just a funny thing. That but then so there was cool. the one guy. There was the one guy when Cody said, "Yeah, this is my dad," and this one guy that I had never met. This guy said, and I quote, "That's your dad." Mm -hmm. It was just—it was so blatant, and it was—it was funny because he just did not expect this African American man to 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 be introduced as as uh, as uh, as Cody's father. Now tell us how Cody is doing right now before we have you read an excerpt from your book. Cody is doing extremely well. Uh, Cody, Cody had, uh, I talk in my book about a lot of things that, that Cody did in terms of testing the limits of his, of his liberties. And then Cody just turned his life around. Cody made a 4.0 his last five semesters at uh, UNT and uh, landed a really nice internship. Uh, before he graduated, and he he chose to go and work with with PepsiCo, mm -hmm. and uh, they made him a, a pretty significant offer uh, okay. after he graduated. So he's doing extremely well, and I'm very proud of proud of Cody. I'm going to have you read an excerpt from your I book. Mean, Get those glasses out, wrap my you, readers here. You're up there with you know, me now. You're in the 50s, yeah, you know man. how it is when you're a teenager. When you turn when you turn 35, man, it's just it's <laughs> tough to <laughs> shout to out find to Talladega uh, College, yeah. Talladega College product. <laughs> So uh, I'm just going to read a, a, a quick book, a quick excerpt from uh, my, my um, chapter Boy. one. This book has not been couched in language to be used as an instructional guide to fatherhood. Uh, further, it is my expectation that men should not look to leverage this book construct that way as it certainly doesn't qualify as a how-to guide to parenting. I'm not presenting myself as an authority on the subject of parenting or fatherhood. This book is simply a narrative with sporadic complexity about my very personal relationship with my stepson, the stepson I grew to love as my own and comported myself as his father. His name is Cody Morris, and our stories are not so different from the many stories around the world of stepfathers who choose to step up in the absence of biological fathers. Conversely, this story about the story of, stories about biological fathers who choose to abandon their children are decidedly more grimmer stories. Mm -hmm. Ralph, within that whole context, and I was moved by that paragraph when I read your book. Uh, let me have you sign this while you're talking to me. Go ahead. I get this autographed copy, so I know it's going to be a bestseller. But within that concept, what do you think it would be like society in, in, a, in a better way if all children had a father in the household? There'd be, what would be substantially different about the way we see society now? I, I tell you, it, and, and that's, a, that's an open, excuse me, that's an open-ended question because it really depends uh, how the father behaves as a father. Um, I think the very first line in my book says, uh, um, it reads, um, the true measure of a fa father could be determined by the level of respect he earns over a lifetime from his son or his daughter. And I believe that, that children get to decide uh, how their to how their parents did, and the outcome of of that child's life uh, is is definitely uh, fathers play big roles in that. I, I tell you, there's an interesting. There are some interesting t statistics, and I think one is that there are about I, I think the number is 27. I, I could get get it out of the book, okay. but 84 percent of all single parents are females, and only 14 percent are males. Mm. And those numbers are pretty big numbers. Um, so, you know, I, I think that this, this, this family structure is, is, is completely being eroded by the absence of, of biological fathers staying. You're going you're gonna to end up being the, the authority on this subject, even though you don't want to be, because you, you've written a great book. And we're so delighted to have you here. Now, we've got some information on the screen where people can get the book and, yeah. and contact you and all those great things uh, as it relates to the book. Are you available for speaking engagements and those things as well, right? I have been doing it. And again, this is, this is something that's been kind of a surprise yeah, for me. Yeah, get rid of the rap. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm getting a lot of requests for, for speaking engagements and that kind of thing. Uh, it's it's been kind of fun. You're going to do very well at it. Uh, it's been a pleasure for us to have Raph Harper here in the studio here on Leap This Live. 